Hi, it's Dr. Tony Hampton here in beautiful Nashville, Tennessee. So of course I had to lift the row. But before we dive into the 12 signs you're insulin resistant, even if your labs look normal, let me say this first. Being a doctor is interesting because by your nature, you're wired to wanna help people. One of the reasons I started this YouTube channel is because helping others isn't just part of my job. It's who I am. Many doctors feel the same way. We were born to serve in our own unique way. So before I go any further, let me give a quick shout out to all the healthcare professionals out there who dedicate their lives to serving others. Now, I say that because it's hard not to serve when you see an opportunity. Back when I used to go to the barbershop, yes, those days are long gone since I keep this head bald and shiny myself now. I'd noticed people who had physical characteristics that to me as a doctor were obvious signs of insulin resistance. But you can't just walk up to someone while they're getting a haircut and say, hey, I think your pancreas is struggling. That would be more awkward than leaving a barbershop halfway through a haircut. So instead, I decided to make this video. If I can't whisper, in someone's ear at the barbershop. Maybe I can share with thousands of people watching right now the subtle but powerful signs that you may have insulin resistance, even if your lab work looks completely normal. Let's be clear, insulin resistance is one of the biggest root causes behind weight gain, type two diabetes, high blood pressure, heart disease, even dementia. The problem is that most people don't realize they have it until it's too late. Doctors often don't catch it either because your standard labs can look fine while your body is silently screaming for help. So today, I'm going to share 12 signs your body might be insulin resistant. As we go through each one, I'll give you not just the sign itself, but the why, the mechanism that explains why it happens. And I promise you some of these will surprise you. Stick around until the end because I'll also share which labs are most useful as a bonus. The first sign is belly fat especially when your waistline starts expanding, even if your weight can't change much. The fat that builds up around your organs, called visceral fat, is the most dangerous type. Insulin is a storage hormone. It tells your body to keep fat locked away. But when your cells stop listening to insulin, your body responds by pumping out even more of it. That extra insulin makes it nearly impossible to burn fat, especially around the midsection. And here's a lesser known fact. Visceral fat is biologically active. It doesn't just sit there. It secretes inflammatory chemicals that make insulin resistance worse, creating a vicious cycle. The second sign is skin tags. Those little fleshy bumps that show up on your neck, armpits, and eyelids might look harmless, but they're like billboards announcing high insulin levels. That's because insulin can overstimulate growth factors in the skin leading to these tags. If you've got several of them, your body may be telling you something more than just you need to visit the dermatologist. Closely related to that is sign number three, dark velvety patches on the skin called acanthosis nigricans. These usually show up on the neck, armpits, and groin. They're not just a cosmetic issue. They're caused by high insulin levels stimulating pigment cells in the skin. And here's the kicker. I've seen this in kids. That means insulin resistance can develop at an early young age, long before most people even check a fasting glucose or A1C. Sign number four, constant cravings for carbs and sugar. Have you ever wondered why you can eat a full meal and still feel like you need dessert? That's not just willpower failing you. When insulin is high, your body is blocked from burning fat for fuel. Since fat is locked away, your brain keeps signaling hunger and cravings for quick sugar. On top of that, sugar lights up the brain's dopamine pathways in the same way addictive drugs do. So when you feel out of control around cookies or bread, it's not just a character flaw, it's biochemistry. Number five is the dreaded afternoon energy crash. You know the pattern. You have lunch, then around two or three in the afternoon, you feel like someone pulled your battery out. That slump is often blamed on not sleeping well or having too much stress. But the real culprit may be your blood sugar roller coaster. Insulin spikes after a carb heavy meal. Then blood sugar comes crashing down, leaving you foggy, tired, and irritable. It looks a lot like adrenal fatigue, but in reality, it's usually metabolic fatigue. The sixth sign is frustrating for almost anyone who deals with it. 
difficulty losing weight despite doing all the right things. You count calories, you exercise, you eat healthy, and yet the scale doesn't move. Why? Because if insulin is high, fat is locked inside your fat cells like money inside a safe with no key. No matter how hard you try, your body won't have access to that fat for fuel. And there's a surprising detail. Sometimes even people who go low carb or keto don't lose weight right away if they're very insulin resistant. It takes time to reset the system. The seventh sign is high blood pressure. Most people think high blood pressure is all about salt, but insulin resistance plays a more prominent role here. High insulin levels tell your kidneys to hold on to sodium and water. More fluid in your blood vessels means higher pressure. Not to mention that high insulin states lead to blood vessel constriction and inflammation. So when doctors tell patients to eat less salt, they're missing the real culprit, insulin. Number eight is brain fog or poor concentration. Insulin resistance doesn't just affect your waistline, it affects your brain. Your neurons need a steady fuel supply, but when your blood sugar is swinging up and down, your brain struggles to keep up. This leads to forgetfulness, confusion, and that cloudy feeling. And here's something many don't know. Insulin resistance in the brain is one of the drivers of Alzheimer's disease. Some researchers even call it type 3 diabetes. Sign number eight, frequent urination. Now, if you've been diagnosed with diabetes, you know this one well. But even if your labs look normal, mild insulin resistance and slightly elevated blood sugars can still make you run to the bathroom more than usual. Over time, this stresses your kidneys, which is one reason insulin resistance is a leading cause of kidney disease. Number 10 is specific to women, polycystic ovary syndrome or PCOS. Insulin resistance drives the ovaries to produce more male hormones or androgens, which leads to irregular cycles, acne, and infertility. In fact, up to 70% of women with PCOS have insulin resistance as their root cause. The good news, when you address insulin resistance, many of these symptoms improve dramatically. The 11th sign, gout or recurrent high uric acid attacks. Most people are told this is caused by eating too much red meat, but here's the truth. Insulin resistance is a big player. High insulin levels reduce the kidney's abilities to flush out uric acid. And guess what else spikes uric acid? Fructose. Yes, the sugar in soda, fruit juice, and even those so-called healthy smoothies. So it's not the steak is the sugar and the insulin resistance. And finally, number 12, sleep problems, especially sleep apnea. Yes, weight gain around the neck can worsen apnea by narrowing the airway, but insulin resistance itself can also disrupt sleep. It interferes with melatonin, the hormone that helps regulate your circadian rhythm. So if you're waking up tired, snoring loudly, or gasping for air at night, don't just blame your mattress. Insulin resistance may be playing a role, now, I promise you a bonus and here it is. While this video is about spotting insulin resistance without labs, there are a few blood tests that can help confirm what you're seeing in the mirror. The most useful is a fasting insulin test. Most labs call anything under 25 normal, but really you want it to be under 10 or even more ideally in the two to five range. Another is the HOMA IR score, which uses the fasting glucose and insulin to calculate resistance. A score above two suggests trouble. Triglyceride to HDL ratio is another clue. If it's above two, that often means insulin resistance. Less than two is great. Less than one is even better. Hemoglobin A1C, which measures your average glucose, can look normal at 5.6%, but that's already on the road towards dysfunction. And a C-peptide test can give insight into how much insulin your pancreas is cranking out. So let me ask you, how many of these 12 signs did you recognize in yourself? Even one or two should be enough to raise a red flag. The good news is insulin resistance is an identity. It's a reversible condition when you address it at the root. And the way you do that is by changing what you eat, how you move, how you sleep, and how you manage stress. Before we wrap up, I'd love to hear from you. Which of these signs surprised you the most? What did I miss? Drop your answer in the comments. And if you're ready to dive deeper into how to prevent insulin resistance, check out my video on how to adopt a low carb diet. And for people with diabetes, read my book, Fix Your Diet, Fix Your Diabetes. I'll pin both in the comments. And if this video helped you, please take a moment to like it, share it, and subscribe. That way you don't miss future videos that can literally change your health and your life. Thank you for watching. And remember, your labs may look normal, but your body doesn't lie.
pay attention to the signs.